we are continuing right where we left off in the last video, and that was negotiations have completely broken down between the rebels and the Carthaginians, and mainly that was through the efforts of Spendius and Mathos. Now with that, the Carthaginians made Hanno commander of all the armed forces. Hanno's first task was to recruit as many mercenaries as he could that were still loyal to the city. This meant recruiting mercenaries from abroad, not in Africa, where most of the rebels were of course located. He also recruited Carthaginian citizens that were of military age. He even took the necessary time to train his forces, and these were skills that Hanno excelled at, training and preparation. However, he was less adept in the field. The rebels were busy as well. Mathos had recruited a very large Libyan army of 70,000 soldiers, and with that he laid siege to the only two cities that remained loyal to Carthage, Utica and Hippu Acre. They also set up a main encampment at Tunis. So now Carthage was really boxed in from all sides. In other words, all the inland routes were blocked, so Carthage was essentially cut off from its grain supply. The rebels even were in a position to march on Carthage itself. In fact, several times the rebel army would march right up to the gates of Carthage, which had the effect of terrorizing the citizens of Carthage. Now, Hanno's first goal was to relieve the siege of Utica. Utica was one of the most important Carthaginian holdings, and since it was one of the few cities that had remained loyal, it was absolutely imperative for Carthage to lift that siege ASAP. Now, Hanno had one major advantage on his side, those war elephants. And since most of the elephant stables were within Carthage itself, Hanno was able to retain possession of this all-important asset. So with these 240 elephants, he was able to smash right through the rebel stockade at Utica. Many rebels were simply trampled to death by these enormous beasts. The rebels had absolutely no chance against so many elephants and were forced to break off their siege and abandon their camp. According to Polybius, the rebels reformed themselves on a nearby hill. Now this is where Hanno made his first big mistake of the war. Hanno assumed that the rebels were done for and simply retired to Utica without preparing any defenses around his camp. I'm assuming this means he didn't at least build a stockade around his camp. Well, these rebels at Utica were battle-hardened veterans that had been previously trained by Hamilcar Barca himself, and so they were used to retreating and then attacking again and fighting guerrilla-style warfare. And so the reorganized rebels now attacked Hanno's camp, which almost criminally had no defenses set up. Hanno's men were forced to flee for their lives to Utica, and even worse, the rebels were able to capture all of Hanno's supplies. His army was saved only by Utica's walls. Thus the siege went on at Utica, and Hanno missed out on a real chance to secure a major victory. These missed opportunities angered the Carthaginian Senate. The decision was made to rehabilitate Hamilcar Barca, and Hamilcar was given an army of 10,000 along with 70 war elephants. And Hamilcar didn't waste any time. He immediately wanted to relieve the siege at Utica. But in order to do that, better progress needed to be made in the West. The problem with this was that the rebels still held all of the strategic positions in the West. Of particular importance were the hills to the West that separated Carthage from Libya. The rebels had placed guards in nearly all of the important passes, as well as the lone bridge that connected the two territories. That bridge controlled the only crossing over the Bagradas River, which led to Utica. So if Hamilcar wanted to take the war to the rebels, he needed to somehow circumvent these defenses. During a scouting mission, Hamilcar uncovered a sandbar that made a crossing of the river possible. So he waited until night, and under the cover of darkness, he and his army were able to cross the river to the shock of the rebels. And now Hamilcar was operating behind enemy lines. Spendius decided to confront Hannibal before he could capture any strategic points. And he was able to trap Hamilcar with two rebel armies. But Hamilcar was never one to panic about changed circumstances. And he decided to set a trap himself. He feigned a retreat from the rebel armies. Now the rebels, sensing a rout, broke ranks and chased the Carthaginians. But Hamilcar now ordered his cavalry to wheel around and attack the 
the disorganized rebels. And after that, Hamilcar signaled his heavy infantry to attack as well. And the route was on. The rebels lost 6,000 men with another 2,000 taken prisoner. It was a stunning victory for Hamilcar, and it was made possible because Hamilcar didn't panic and instead took advantage of the situation that presented itself. We will see these similar traits later on in Hannibal Barca. Now, after that victory, Hamilcar didn't waste any time capturing that most important bridge connecting Libya to Carthaginian territory, and this reopened the lines of communication to Utica, and as a result, many of the rebels were forced to retreat to Tunis. Here, the rebels were able to reorganize, but instead of taking on Hamilcar in the open plain again, they decided to shadow Hamilcar rather than risk an all-out confrontation. A short time later, the rebels were able to trap Hamilcar yet again. This time, Hamilcar found himself pinned between a Numidian army from his rear and Spendius on one of his flanks. But then something interesting happened. The Numidian leader at night approached the Carthaginian camp and pledged loyalty to Hamilcar and Carthage. The Numidians provided 2,000 essential cavalry to Carthage. And with this stroke of luck, Hamilcar decided to take on the rebel army on his flank. And a brutal fight ensued. But once again, the elephants were absolutely decisive. Along with his new allies, the Numidians, the rebels lost another 10,000 men with 4,000 taken prisoner, although Spendius himself somehow managed to elude capture. Now, with all of these victories, Hamilcar had taken thousands of rebel prisoners, and he apparently not only treated them fairly, but he also offered them clemency. These were, after all, veterans that had previously been in the Carthaginian army. Spendius and Mathos began to worry about Hamilcar's gentle treatment of the rebel prisoners. Specifically, they worried about mass desertions, and so they called for a war council to convince the rebel army that this all was part of an elaborate ruse on Hamilcar's part, and that after the war was over, the rebels would be dealt with poorly. Basically, Spendius and Mathos wanted to inflame the situation as much as they could. They did this by promising to have every Carthaginian prisoner executed. So as you can see, this war was quickly taking a very dark turn. Now at this rebel war council, there were some who tried to speak in favor of the Carthaginians, but anyone who did this were stoned to death. And if it looked like anyone arose to speak in favor of the Carthaginians, the audience would yell out, stone them, stone them. So the harsh agenda of Spendius and Mathos won the day. And so with that, the Carthaginian prisoners of war were executed, but they were not quickly executed. Executed. They were brutally tortured. They first had their hands cut off, and then their legs broken, and then they were buried alive in a trench. The rebels even refused to let the Carthaginians collect and bury their dead, which was a tremendous insult in ancient times. Predictably, Hamilcar and Hanna were outraged at the treatment of their brethren. They now issued new orders that there was to be no surrender accepted, and that every rebel was to be killed on the spot. Any rebel that was somehow captured alive were given an appointment with the elephants. Well, I think you know where I'm going with that. Now, Hanno and Hamilcar decided the war could best be won by combining their forces. But since they rarely agreed on anything, the generals allowed the soldiers to pick the overall general. So in a strange sense, the rebels' behavior propelled the Carthaginians to unite at least for the time being. And the troops chose Hamilcar to lead them. Now, during this time, Utica and Hippoacra decided to revolt. Remember, those cities had remained loyal to Carthage in the initial phases of the war. Well, now they became bitter enemies. This greatly improved the morale of the rebels, especially after those defeats to Hamilcar. Meanwhile, the Carthaginians once again found themselves surrounded and their inland routes blocked. And with that, the rebels were able to lay siege to Carthage itself. And so the city was now in real danger of going down for the count. At this point, Carthage found help from the most unlikely of places, Rome. The Roman fleet allowed supplies to reach Carthage while simultaneously stopping any provisions from reaching the rebels. Rome even rejected an offer by Utica to join the Roman Republic. Now, why would Rome do all of this? What purpose did this serve? Well, I think it had something to do with that large sum of money that Carthage owed Rome. If Carthage was annihilated, the agreement would have been null and void. And the rebels certainly would not have been on the hook to pay Rome back, so it was in Rome's best interest to keep Carthage afloat, to pay back their huge war fine. 
And Rome needed lots of cash. Remember, they had their treasury depleted during the First Punic War. And they had to finance missions against the Gauls in northern Italy and numerous other campaigns. Nothing comes for free, especially in the ancient world. So the supplies received from sea allowed Carthage to hold out against the rebel siege. But Hamilcar wanted to win the war. And in order to do that, he had to disrupt the rebel supply lines. And that's exactly what he did. And this forced the rebels to pay attention to Hamilcar rather than Carthage. Although the rebels had huge advantages in terms of numbers, they still avoided a confrontation on the open plain where Hamilcar's elephants could be decisive. Eventually, through brilliant generalship, Hamilcar was able to turn the situation completely around and trap part of the rebel army. The now trapped rebel army hoped a relief force would be sent from the main rebel camp at Tunis. But when no relief force arrived, and with supplies dwindling, the rebels were actually forced to turn to cannibal to survive. So at this point, the rebels had no alternative but to negotiate terms with Hamilcar. Hamilcar agreed that the rebels could leave the battlefield unharmed as long as they agreed to two conditions. They had to first lay down their arms, and secondly, the Carthaginians could pick any ten men from the rebel army to take prisoner. And with that, the rebels agreed. And guess who the Carthaginians picked? Well, they picked all the senior commanders to take prisoner, including Spendius. And a short time later, Spendius was crucified near Tunis. This was a disaster for the rebels, because they already had no one on par with Hamilcar's ability, but now they had lost several of their senior commanders. After this major victory, Hamilcar forced an engagement with the Libyan rebel army at a place called the Saw, and therefore this engagement became known as the Battle of the Saw. By the way, the exact location of the Battle of the Saw is unknown even today. But it was here that the entire Libyan army was driven into a steep ravine and wiped out to the man. The rebels lost 40,000 soldiers. A titanic loss. And now it was clear the war was all but over for the rebels. After this, several Libyan towns and cities switched sides and declared their allegiance to Carthage. With all of these successes, Hamilcar laid siege to Tunis, one of the last rebel strongholds. And this time he had two Carthaginian armies. One army was commanded by Hamilcar, and the other was commanded by Hannibal. By the way, not Hannibal Barca. Now, Mothos launched a surprise attack on the overconfident Hannibal and actually succeeded in destroying the Carthaginian camp. When news finally reached Hamilcar's camp, the great general had no choice but to break off his siege of Tunis. But after a series of engagements, Hamilcar finally succeeded in defeating Mothos and taking him prisoner in the process. And with the last major rebel army finally defeated, Libya submitted to Carthage. So Carthage survived to fight another day, and Hamilcar would soon set his sights on a new land, Spain, a rich and prosperous land with numerous gold and silver mines. And we'll get to that in the next few videos.